Hi, in this one we'll give a tail probability bound using the characteristic function. Lemma 3 There exists a positive k such that for every positive a and every f distribution function we have the following bound the probability that x is 1 over a, which you can write this way, is bounded from above by k over a, the integral from 0 to a, of 1 minus the real part of the characteristic function integrated. That's the lemma. Okay, let's prove this. Let's prove this. Let's start writing the, essentially the right hand side. So let's start writing 1 over a, integrate from 0 to a, 1 minus real part phi dt. It's, it's the right hand side except for the number k. So what is that? Now, what is phi of t? Phi of t is the integral from minus infinity to infinity e to the i t x d f x. That's one way of writing it. If I take the real part of it, if I take the real part of it, then real part goes across the integration, it hits the exponential function, and what is the real part of e to the i t x? It's just cosine of t x. So I'm going to put here the integral the same integral as down here, of the real part of e to the i t x, which is cosine of t x, d f x. So that's the real part of phi. Okay, all of that is integrated with respect to t. Okay. Now, the next observation is that if I integrate 1, df, that's 1. f is a distribution function, the total increase of the distribution function from minus infinity to infinity is 1. So I can actually bring this 1 underneath the integral, nothing will change. So I'm going to do that from 0 to a, integrate from minus infinity to infinity, and then 1 minus cosine of tx, dfx. Again, that's because when I integrate 1 with respect to f, that just gives me this one here outside the integration. So it doesn't matter if I bring it in or out. Now comes the mathematician reflex. I see two integrals. I immediately want to swap them. Uh, can I do that? Well, 1 minus cosine is bounded in mod by 2, no matter what t and x do. They are real numbers. So this is bounded by 2. If I integrate 2 df, that's 2. If I integrate 2 from 0 to a dt, that's finite. So Fubini allows me to exchange the uh, order of the two integrations. So let's do that. I'm going to integrate from minus infinity to infinity uh, with respect to f outside. I'm going to bring this constant 1 over a in here and I'm going to do the integral from 0 to a of 1 minus cosine of tx and this one is integrated with respect to t which is nice because I know how to integrate that the inner bits of it is going to give me two contributions there is gonna be an a when I integrate 1 from 0 to a and that will cancel out this other a in front, so that I write is 1. And then with the minus sign, there's going to be the integral of cosine of tx with respect to t. What is the integral of cosine with respect to t? It's a sine of tx, but because of the inner uh, factor x, I have to divide with that. And I also have the 1 over a in front, which I'm going to put here. Take this at a, subtract at 0, all of this integrated against f in x. Okay, so this 1 over a comes here, the x comes out from the 
in the bits of the cosine function, it's treated as a constant with respect to the integration. And that just gives me the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 minus sine of ta. This is an xa or ax. xa. Because this is t equals to 0 and t equals to a. So that's an ax or xa <coughs> over ax. Okay. Uh, integrated against df. All right. Now, if you look at the sine of x over x function, we met this function before, not not, not so long ago. This is never larger than one. In fact, it's strictly smaller than one whenever x is uh, not zero. So the function itself looks like. This function itself looks something like this. It's limit doesn't exist at uh, zero, but it has a nice limit. It looks something like that. It's bounded away from one anywhere outside x equals to zero. So if I want to plot the function sine of x over x, this is how it looks like. Which means that 1 minus sine of x over x, or 1 minus sine of ax over ax, is never negative. So actually, if I lose part of this interval, then I'm just going to uh, decrease its value. So if I only integrate this, on this set, ax mod larger than or equal to 1, integrate the same thing, 1 minus sine of ax over ax then I can only decrease in value because I lost some positive contribution on the complement of this set and also if the variable ax is at least one which means in absolute value which means I'm looking at the region outside minus one one that means that my function values are strictly bounded away from 1. Anywhere I go in this interval, the values of the function are strictly bounded away uh, from 1. So that means that this difference is bounded away from 0. It's larger than some constant, which I'm going to call 1 over k. So for some k, positive and finite, I have this bound here. Okay, That means that my integral is larger than or equal to the integration on that set ax mod at least 1 of 1 times dfx and the constant 1 over k this constant here and now if you compare the two sides of this inequality so what I started with was 1 over a 1 minus real part integrated the right hand side is 1 over k integral of uh, df, if you compare these two sides, that's exactly what this statement was about. So that's a lower bound for this. The k is actually over on the other side, otherwise that's the statement we want.